David Yazbek is the wildly talented songwriter of well-loved Broadway musicals like The Full Monty and Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, who this season is experiencing a career high with the clever and moving The Dance Visit. In adapting a 2007 foreign film about an Egyptian band biding time in a small Israeli town, Yazbek found a perfect cast of characters for his joyful music and quirky lyrical talents. The three-time Tony nominee kicks off his shoes and shares stories about his rough-and-tumble NYC childhood, his favorite songs, and that time he got naked on stage on this week's show, people. Mr. Gazbeck. Hi. Are you comfortable? I'm finally comfortable. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's about the depth of the chair. It's about the arch of the back. I'm comfortable. Thank Great. you for letting me keep my legs crossed for I this. I like my guests comfortable. Thank you look you. great. Thank you. Do, oh, how do you feel about doing interviews? I think all the ones I've done with you have been delightful. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's good. Are I'm, you a Tony voter? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Not anymore. I used to I like to, to know whose ass I'm licking. I used to be. I was back in the years of some of your other shows. I and think I, think I remember that. I helped you out. I think I th maybe. I'm no longer a Tony voter. Speaking of, um, of like, Tony's. The T word has been coming up. The only Tony I talk about is Tony Shalhoub, the star <laughs> of the band's visit. Yes. My favorite Tony. Yes. The band's visit is a big smash hit. How does all this praise um, work for you? The thing that's very really gratifying for me is that people are reacting to my work and to the work of my collaborators yeah. in a way that is genuine and that is positive and um, that just makes me feel really good that we communicated something correctly. Mm -hmm. They're really satisfying. I was really thinking hard about it this morning before you got here, and I think you're my favorite living composer. I'm pretty sure. Well, you, not you, for long. <laughs> Why? What's going to happen? I'm going to die. <laughs> Eventually, we all do. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Paul, I want to make this announcement. Um, you write some fantastic musicals, Thank and you. I think I fell in love with you and your talent in the literally the first notes of the Full Monty Overture. I mean, da the da full da Monty da overture. Da 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 that's all it took. That's, that's all it took. And I remember it was like an explosion in the theater to hear that music. Thanks. You I wrote that overture specifically because I knew, and it was my first show, yeah. because I, you know, I've been in bands all my life. Right. And I just thought, if I were in a pit orchestra playing the same show, you know, eight, eight shows a week, yeah. uh, I, want, I want the first thing I play to be something that I really have fun doing and that's kind of loud and that I can blast. Mm -hmm. that, that was the, that's the reason I wrote that, <laughs> that overture. Yeah, well, I'm glad. And it worked. Thank you. And it Thank really you. was like a calling card. That's it was cool. like, look, That's there's cool. this new guy. Because I remember, it was like, who's this guy? Who's this guy? I heard you wrote jingles and stuff. That's thing that's all I heard at the time. I had written some jingles. You had written some jingles. Yeah. And then they were like, you write a Broadway musical. And you did. And it was a full Monty. And it's one of my yeah, favorite thank musicals. You. Thank you. Thank so you. anyway. Let's, uh, let's revive it. Yeah, well, somehow. we're going to talk about that. Okay. Because that, that also needs to happen. I think so. So the music in the band's visit is very different. And you've actually, over the years, you've sort of shown great diversity. And, and uh, what I love is how you sort of really drop into uh, you know, like if you look at like Women on the Verge, Whenever's Breakdown, you were really were like, you know, going into a real sound there. The sound of the band's visit, this is Arabic music, right? Is this music you knew naturally or did you have to sort of yeah, I, I, dig um, into it? Well, the sound, I mean, when you think of the band's visit, you think of Arabic music because there's a real Arabic band on right. stage. The band is, this is a group of world-class musicians, some right. of whom can act, <laughs> you know, really good, really good actor. There's plenty of improvisation, so it's different every night, um, that you think of it as, oh, it's the Arabic score, but... But there's a lot going on. There's a lot. It's very, it's yeah. very eclectic. It's a kind of music that I've loved for uh, most of my life. When I was seven years old, uh, I was, uh, for the first time, I went to Lebanon with my dad, right. whose father was from, we were going to visit his father, mm -hmm. and um, we had just landed at the airport. We were on the taxi on the way up the mountain because mm -hmm. that's where the house was. And the cab driver had this really dreamlike music on the radio that even at age seven was, uh, was sort of blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. And I asked my dad, to at, who spoke, he doesn't really speak Arabic anymore, but he did then, um, to ask him what that was. And it was Um Kultum, who is the most famous singer in the world. Mm -hmm. She was more popular than Frank Sinatra. Wow. And there was something about the way the orchestra sounded and these ki this kind of microtonal sort of the flavors of these sp mm -hmm. sp spicy flavors. That's a very vivid memory for me. I still remember it. I still remember the taxi. I remember mm -hmm. the window was open and, and hearing it. 
Um, and I've, I've always loved that kind of music. Yeah. And you thought, one day... One day I'm going to be... <laughs> I'm going to bring this music to Broadway. It's like, what's the least likely thing that could happen? I'll become a Broadway composer <laughs> and then bring this music to... Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so this movie, I did not know the movie. I still haven't seen the movie. I want to see the movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, I've heard it's a great movie. How did, how did this come about? I had known of the, of the movie. Okay. Oren Wolf, who is our producer, this is his first Broadway show. A young guy, very creative. Really, it was his vision. He saw the movie uh, years ago, thought it would, he could translate it to stage, mm -hmm. that it would work. And then he came to me, and he came to Edomar Moses. Turns out, very smart pairing. So Oren really is the, the movie is Iran Kolarin's movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody should see it. It's just beautiful. And that's the spring th from which this all flowed. But Oren was, the, you know, the water bearer. <laughs> and there's us. a lot of music in the movie. I've heard. Yeah, there's, there... yes, because it's about a band who gets right. lost in the desert right. and ends up in this weird Israeli kind of settlement, a small town, and there is, there is music played in the movie. And it's really about these people and sort of dropping in on their world, right? Yeah. And did it, you sort of see that opportunity and go, oh, these are like great characters I want to write I, for? The, the way it happened for me was I saw the movie and I was left so deeply moved by the film and I couldn't figure exactly out why and I love movies like that when you're just like what just happened you right. know and my first instinct always is I'm not going to do this mm. <laughs> so I thought we can't do that uh, you know I don't this is <laughs> nope, not, not happening no not happening so it always takes me a while to say yes to uh -huh. that stuff but it haunted me and I just kept thinking if we can reach that emotional place we will have done something that people don't do in musicals. Right. Musicals tend to inflate, you know, musicals tend to manipulate, especially musicals that, that, that want to seem to be, have a lot of heart. When you hear the word heart, mm. when heart comes out of the advertising agency, mm. <laughs> there's often certain chord changes that I cannot stand. Mm. And, uh, and lyrics and, you know. Right. So that was really exciting to me. The concept, and I knew having read Edomar's stuff and having spoken to him a lot, that he could come up with the goods. So that's what got exciting. And then the, just the, the promise that I could live in that world, in that world with those scales and, those, um, and listen to that music so I could just ingest it and then write it and maybe learn. I tend to like to learn new instruments to right. help me with the music. So, right. you know, play the oud and the, the darbuka, the drum. Mm -hmm. And then I said yes. And, and here we are. Well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more David Yazbek. <laughs> and we are back with Mr. David Yazbek, <laughs> who created the brilliant band's visit. Uh, you've been grilling me. Uh, this has been a tough interview for me. <laughs> I, I, well, we're going to get tough now. How do okay. you feel about talking about your childhood? I want to hear about your Fun. childhood. My, so you, you're a Manhattan kid, right? I grew up in Manhattan, yeah. Upper West Side. Upper West Side, and then over to the East Side later. Oh, west to, you went west to east. I grew up living in really nice places. Not that my father was rich. You right. know, just that was the Manhattan. Now, I got mugged eight times. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. How scary was that? It, it got less scary. <laughs> you, got, you got good at it. It was basically. just like, oh, here, here you go. Like how old were you the first time you got mugged? Eight, eight years old. Wow, and you were yeah. by yourself? I was by myself. What did that guy walk away with? Was it a guy? This is a true story. Uh -huh. He walked away with like half a vanilla ice cream cup that I had. <laughs> That was the first. He mugged you for your ice cream? It was a soft, it was like a soft <laughs> vanilla ice cream cone. And, uh, and he got it. I'm so sorry. I didn't have any money. He took, I mean, I, he probably just threw it away, but you know, he had to have some, get something. Wow. And, and you, you sort of fell in love with music early on, and you started playing. I think I came, came, came out of the womb with it, you know, like, uh -huh. no, like everything coming through the ears, and sound was the, was the chosen mm -hmm. sense. And rock star dreams? Like, did you want to be a rock star? Is that what sort of the... Rock star dreams started probably at the age of 11 or 12. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you started a band early on. Yes, I had a band. And there was an article that said that, the, I think the New York Times said they couldn't print the name of the band. Yes, can I say it? Yes. I mean, it's not, th it's not that say bad. Say it. The first band I was in, we, we called Pure Shit. Oh. And the reason we called it, it was my That's idea. That's a good rock and roll name. Well, the reason we called it that was just so that after we'd finished playing, the MC could say, ladies and gentlemen, that was pure shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a 
that didn't last very long. Um, <laughs> I just love, I mean, just loved, loved the Beatles and then Led Zeppelin and the Stones and, and I just you- wanted to be playing with loud drums behind me. That was the dream. And the problem is when you're, when what you play is the piano, yeah. then, you know, you can find ways to make it work with the loud drums. Uh-huh. But really what you want to be playing is, is guitar, is electric guitar. Right. And sometimes I did, but piano was really, I was very good at and guitar. You're, you're still very good at it. Thank and you. and Thank actually, you. I love whenever you do a gig, you, you have a fantastic, people should see you live whenever they can. I mean, it is, it is the rock star, David Yazbek. Well, it's like the jazz would be rock star. You're I mean, fantastic. I, I love playing live. I play with some great musicians and we all love each other's playing. So we get to just, pl- it's literally playing, you mm-hmm. know, like in the sandbox. Mm-hmm. So as you know, I play monthly at 54 Below. Right. And uh, these next few months, it's gonna, I'm always going to feature people from the band's visit. Cool. And you have great albums too. Like, so, I mean, you have great original cast thank albums you. that you wrote, but also uh, Evil Monkey Man is a good one. That's, I was listening to that this you. morning. I got five. I was, getting, I was digging back into that. Five solo albums. I and know. when you listen to those albums, you really do, you hear a lot of the, the, the things that you hear in your shows. You know what I mean? Like you definitely can. Uh, there's a lot of songs in the band's visit I can picture you recording on your own. Well, that's one of the things I really feel like I, uh, that I love about the band's visit is these are songs that I would, I would have been very proud to have come up with just to, to say what I want to say on an album. Right. It's the day job and the real job coming together. Uh-huh. So according to Wikipedia, when you were at Brown University, you wrote a musical. True? Wow. It's one of those rare true things in Wikipedia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wrote what the, was that? I wrote the music to a musical. Oh, my, my memory's terrible. It was called Four Stars. That's what it was called. Oh. And literally, just it was called Four Stars, like star, 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 star. Oh, that was the title was it, The Stars. Yeah. And that's because it, was, it took place at a hotel. Uh-huh. And um, I think it was loosely based on Ludwig Bemelmans, who ended up doing the Madeline series of um, oh, okay, right. illustrations. Is it also true that when the school did hair, you decided to add a song to it, an original well, song? Well, the school did hair. I, I did hair. I've, I'd always loved hair okay. you know, from an early age, from when it first came out. Yeah. So when I was in college, I just thought, oh, I, I can actually get a production of this, you know, do a revival. So we did a revival. You know, because there was nudity in it, uh-huh. There were lines, like literally lines down the stairs, around wow. the block, you know. So it was a really big hit. And then I just had nothing to do that summer. But you, you were in it? No, I was, I was. The, What'd you do? I directed it oh. and musical directed it. Wow, okay. I actually co-directed it. Okay. And the guy that I co-directed it with, we were sitting around and we, neither of us had, we, we had graduated. Yeah, we had graduated school. Okay. We we're like, what are, we, what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? And I just thought, why don't, we, why don't we try to do this in Boston? Oh. So we found a theater <laughs> and we did it in Boston. So the first, my first job out of college was producing and directing hair which in Boston. Which we had workshopped in school. You which we had workshopped in school. You, you moved it it was kind of a no brainer because it was so popular there. Right. And we ran in Boston for like a year, like wow. you know, a long time. Oh, and wow. um, you know it was a hit, and um, uh, and I played in the in piano in the band, and uh, I remember doing like a fairly stressful two weeks when the guy playing Claude broke his arm, I think it was, Uh-oh. and we didn't have, <laughs> and I had to go in. For you him. did, and I played it. You were Claude. I was Claude. I was naked. You were naked. I was naked. You were naked on the Boston stage. On the Boston naked stage. Naked on Bo- naked in Boston. I p- appeared naked in, on the Boston stage. Wow. Um, I had a lot more hair back then. Okay. <laughs> I had written a song that was a really good sort of gospel-y number. Okay. And it didn't have to be in the show, but there were some people in the show who were actual gospel singers, oh. you know, who sang all their childhoods and. And I just was like, yeah, let's, let's stick it in there. It's going to be great. And, uh, and it was great. Them singing it was great. It was an idiotic thing to do. It didn't really belong in the show. You can get in trouble um, for that. Um, well, we, what ended up happening with the show was Michael Butler, who was the original producer, uh-huh. got interested in us. Oh, wow. And uh, he came. or he You were said, like, we're going to Broadway. Well, we thought we might go to have a tour, have a national yeah, tour. Okay. And we almost did. And he started, he funneled a little extra money from, for, that we needed to sort of bump up the advertising and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, and he said, you know something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't keep that song in there. You know? mm. He said, it's really lovely, 
I think if the original authors came to see it, which they could do at any time, right. not only could they come to see it, but contractually, either one of them or both of them could have actually, even at their advanced age, taken over the roles oh, wow. of Claude and wow. Berger. Contractually, wow. Contractually. Wow. They may not enjoy that song. They and certainly not. if Galt McDermott saw it, he would really not enjoy it. And I, so I said, yep, I, is got, it, I get is it. Is it safe to assume you don't encourage directors to add songs to the full Monty? I, or I, scoundrels when they do them out of town? I'll tell you something. If, if, if they sent me a song and I thought it was great. You're open to it. No, <laughs> but I still would like to hear the song. <laughs> you just want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back with more David Yazbek. Welcome back. We are sitting with, well, cross-legged with uh, David Yazbek, the man who wrote the brilliant The Band's Visit. Thank you. Peter Moses. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> wh- what do you like to call yourselves? Are you, uh, like, I just say the um, composer, lyricist, songwriter. I say songwriter, but I'll, songwriter. I'll take either one I say either that too, but I feel like that's not like an acceptable like Broadway term. That's why I guess I like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? That's a good transition, actually, because you've had a lot of great shows on Broadway. Thank I love you. The Full Monty. Thanks. I love Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Thank you. I love Women on the Verge of Marriage Breakdown, even though it had a very stressful birthing. And I, and I hear that it went better in London, right? It's, it is now, it really is now a great show. Like, I love it. I love it. So it wasn't it. a great show on Broadway? No. On Broadway, we didn't have time to, to make it great. Two weeks after opening night, by, that, by then, it was good. All right. But, okay. we, but Jeffrey Lane and I worked not, not knowing that we were going to do it in London, right. we worked very hard so that, the, so that we'd have a show, a book, and, and a story mm-hmm. that we knew would work when people licensed it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we were asked to do it in London, and we used that as a, with Bart Scher, right. the, dire- the yeah. original director. Yeah. We, all three of us, used it as, as a way to really, really clean it up and make it really what we wanted. Yeah. And uh, it is exactly what I want. I, I, I keep thinking maybe we should try to do it like at BAM or something like that. I right. just would like to show it off. Yeah, I would love that. They loved it in London. I loved it. I, I thought it was really, really good. And in the year of the Full Monty, which you deserved a Tony Award for, I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to put that on. So I've been saying it to people for <laughs> years. You. I might as well say it on camera. All right, we'll take um, it. There was a, show, a little show called The Producers. This is, this is sort of common knowledge. The Producers was sort of the big yeah, yeah. Tony winner that year, yeah. unfortunately. Big steamroll. Uh, I, mean, I mean, great, fun show, but you know, unfortunate for, for you. And so do you feel like you've been sort of unlucky with timing over the years? With um, Yeah, but not, I mean, I'm not resentful of it. I mean, yeah. but there are years when, I do feel that there are years when any one of my my and my collaborator shows would easily win a would have easily have won. <laughs> so it's just weird. And sometimes it's and who knows what the reasons are. I have, yeah. I just don't I don't understand it. So yeah. you know, there's nothing that you I can't work towards it or not. Right. So. Do you feel like with the band's visit, which is sort of critically adored, like you know, I mean it really got an Critically amazing. being a big a big I mean every audiences. I mean, you've like always it gotten too. good reviews for your work, but this show is really sort of like people I've, are really I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I, I literally couldn't believe it. Yeah, I don't read reviews, so so you know, I, I, I people like you know our publicists and stuff are like, yeah, you know, I like they come up to me like doing this, like, and I'd be like, what, <laughs> what happened? Not, no, not good. You know, they'd be like, no, I've never seen reviews like this, and I'd be like, oh well, that's good, <laughs> right? You know, but I don't exactly know what it means, but I do know it's much better than getting not good reviews. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> of I've course. learned that. Of course, yeah. You've, you've worked in a lot of worlds. Emmy winner, everybody, for writing on, on Letterman, long time late, ago. late Night with David late, Letterman. Late, late Night with Right, David the Letterman. Late Night Show. NBC. You've worked in the advertising world. Clio and, Awards. And, and you've worked... <laughs> <laughs> a Clio? Yeah. I oh. think my tr- I did a campaign for the truth, you know, the anti-cigarette thing. Yeah. That won a Clio. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know about your Clio. Oh. I don't have one. I, I, the campaign one. No one sent me one. I'm going to get you one. It's all, and the campaign was all my songs, so that's why I felt like maybe I'm a Clio winner. Right. Yeah, you're a clear winner. Let's just say that. And then the Nobel Prize for economics, <laughs> which I'm very proud of. <laughs> uh, but you've worked in a lot of worlds. Was the theater world, when you entered the theater world, like I said, you were kind of an outsider or you were new to it, to the Broadway scene. Did it, did it feel like a natural place for you right away when you got to Broadway? And Well, I was with, I was with some very extraordinary people. You know, mm. Jack O'Brien yes. got me immediately. Right. And what he got was something that only someone who had, who had also worked as a lyricist, which he had mm. before, could get, which is he heard that I understood what a hook was. 
mm. a hook in a song. Mm -hmm. And um, I treasure that when I'm listening to songs, you know, that's stuff that sticks with you. Yeah. And he got that. He also got my sense of humor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and that, was a, that was great <laughs> because, boom, I was in. I was in with one of the greatest directors we've ever seen. Right. What are uh, a few of your favorite theater songs that you've written? Is, is, are you able to like pick things that you go like, wow, that was... Like yeah, occasionally, you know, uh, I can look back at some of, some of the lyric stuff I did that yeah. I'm really proud of. Um, you know, there's a song that we actually ended up cutting <laughs> from Dirty Rotten Scoundrels called Chimp in a Suit. Oh, right, yeah. I think that has like some of my favorite of my just notions and rhymes. Uh -huh. I think uh, there's another, there's just a moment in that same show where it, the, it's a song called Like This, Like That, uh -huh. and there's just one line, and she's singing in English and he's correcting right. her French, and, yeah. and she says something, I think the line is, if the past were plus parfait, we'd have met another day. So I was able to get the plus parfait in, <laughs> the, pl the plus perfect in. Anyway, I, so that's just a personal pat on the uh -huh. back kind of moment. Right. I think Omar Sharif in the band's visit yeah. is probably one of my favorite yeah. songs that I've written for, for theater. And the great Katrina Lang performs <laughs> that every God. night. And I could listen to her sing that and anything. Yeah. She's been, been a guest with us in, in yeah. uh, 54 Below. She's yeah. sung songs of mine. She's sung songs she's written, all different styles. Wow. She's got the most gorgeous voice. I'm really, I'd like You're to make an album with her. She's great. I'm very excited for your next project. I just, I, we can't not talk about this. You are, you are making a musical out of one of my favorite movies from the 80s, Tootsie, the incredible movie Tootsie. A lot of younger people haven't seen Tootsie. Please rent, rent Tootsie. I mean, it's, or maybe rent it after seeing the show. All right, just go see the show. <laughs> so you've been working on this musical. You're doing it in Chicago later this year. So that's cool to know your next thing. Yes, yes. And it's, a, it's very interesting because it's a departure. It's like out-and-out -out comedy. Robert Horn wrote a book that is so funny. Uh -huh. I, I just laugh and laugh when I see the, when we do readings and stuff. It's different in every way from the band's visit. Right. Um, and it's, you know, which is fun. It's fun to go do a complete 180. So maybe closer to like Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. I mean, I, I, in terms of like, uh, you know, I mean, those are those are comedies. Yeah, Monty. closer closer to a Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. It's a really smart comedy. Uh -huh. There's there's some elements of conventional musical comedy, mm -hmm. underlying comedy, mm -hmm. and then there's some really interesting kind of new stuff in it that's that will make it timely and different. Mm -hmm. So when you're creating a sound for a musical, I mean, obviously you don't have a jumping off point as clear as. Women on the Verge or the band's visit, but it's more like bright. I mean, bright is the word that comes to mind. You know, when I think about the first three notes, I fell in love. You know, this will this will remind you of those first three notes. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. A whole musical, a whole musical inspired by those. You three will. Notes. I knowing you, I, you <laughs> will really like it. I, I can't wait. You're to gonna see really it. like it. And is is there any movement on the project I have been, you know, working on on social media for years, getting the full Monty back? Is there, uh, we, there uh, needs to be a revival of the full Monty. There, someone, I get a call like once a year. Okay. Um, someone who really knows what they're doing and who understands why it could be a really big hit as a revival mm -hmm. needs to give me a call uh, I, or give someone a call. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um, but I, I know how to, I, I'm pretty sure I know how to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, I also think, I think a movie version of the musical is I was going to ask you that too. I feel like I, I was I feel like uh, I want a David Yasbeck movie we, musical. There were some talks about the full Mo doing the full Monty mm -hmm. and and maybe maybe we'll maybe that will continue. I don't I don't know. You know, we have to let you go, but you know, the, the Tony Awards are coming up and I know you're just going to go into all that very cool and loose, right? Oh, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to I think I'll go away <laughs> for the next few <laughs> months. <laughs> yeah. You're just going to skip out on now, all that. No, you won't see much of me the next few months. <laughs> but you know, award season you do get a lot of like swag and tote bags. That's like a thing. No, I can't wait. I know you tweeted recently <laughs> that you you are looking for Oh, you're giving you me a tote bag. Because you are somebody that uh, we put together um, Oh, it's a Oh, uh, Broadway. And, and just so there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there for oh, you. Oh, well, that makes it really a good tote bag. Uh, some of it is just ridiculous and random. Some stuff that we had lying around the office. This is a high quality tote bag, and I thank you for it. You're, you're, you are welcome. Thank you. Uh, and there's, there's some good uh, fashion in there. Well, so. anything that has a drawstring, yeah, I, I consider to be good, that good be fashion. Good, that would be good for you. Oh, a, I love this. This is lovely. Hoodie. Thank yeah. you. It's so soft. Yes. You're, you're welcome. And uh, what is ours is yours. It's what we call Walmart cashmere. It's like, <laughs> thank you, Paul. <laughs> it's very nice. You are welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. It was fun. Like, just like I said, it might be. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs>
Good, I'm glad. Yeah. And I can't wait to see Tootsie. And everybody, go see the band's visit. It's at the Barrymore Theater. It's fantastic. And this guy. He's right. He wrote it. It's fantastic. He's a songwriter. And I did write it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.